Hello, everyone. Welcome to another brand new episode of the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. It is I, the Reverend Godfather, the show's main host and front man. And this week, I bring you another panel from the Eastern Panhandle Paracon, which happened this past July 21st and 22nd. And this panel is titled uh, My Spiritual Journey by Lori Johnson. And now for the standard disclaimers, which is ba- basically, uh, one, we do not take ownership of the content in any way, shape, or form. We are just sharing the content. Two, we give credit where credit is due. And three, the, all the credit and the content belongs to the person giving the panel, where in this case is Lori Johnson. And the disclaimers, uh, out of the way, I must state before we, uh, now, this is an editor's note, which is me stating this. Over six minutes of content was taken out of this panel. Not because it was bad or anything like that. Because where this panel was given, like the other panels we'll be providing to all of you, it was in a space that was about the size of a football field. Now, there was a microphone and speakers provided, or I should say, there was a um, an audio system set up for somebody to speak and everybody in the room to be heard. And at one point, the person giving this panel dis- took it upon herself to no longer use the mic whatsoever. No longer use the mic. And the people who uh, spoke up in questions were seemingly so far away that not only did the person giving the panel not repeat the questions or anything like that, they were so hard to hear and so hard to pick up in regards to what was said that... I couldn't boost anything. And if I did, it you still couldn't have heard anything that was said. Or make it out. If you did, you couldn't even make it out. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves in regards to everything. Whether it's YouTube videos or panels in this type of environment. If someone provides you with an audio system, a PA system, that has a mic that you could pick up and use, so people 150, 200 feet away can hear you, use that microphone. And if you're a YouTuber, your computer comes with a microphone. Use the damn thing. Microphones are cheap. My microphone was like less than 40 bucks on Amazon. It, I would love to rant and rave for the next 40 minutes in regards to microphone usage. But I won't. Just that my if any of those from the Twisted Paranormal Society are listening to this, well, next time you do a panel and somebody provides you with a PA system to use... And the only person using that microphone is your moderator. Yell at that moderator. Kick their ass. Because that microphone is there for a reason. It's so you could broadcast yourselves to a wider audience. Now, if their excuse comes back, well, there's only 5 people, 10 people, 15 people there, it does not matter. If there is five people there, you should be using that microphone like there's 50 people, 100 people, or 500 people there. Because it's there to use. Do not ignore it. Stand by it. Move. If somebody asks a question, repeat the question. It's there. Please use it. Now, that being said, here is my spiritual journey by Lori, let me get again, I had it earlier, where's my little thing, yep, it is Lori Johnson, and the panel is My Spiritual Journey, we'll be back after the panel, thank you. Alright, I'm short, and I I can only see parts of you, I'm kidding, (laughs) okay, Um, if anybody has a question for me, just let, just ask me, Um, 
I don't really know how to talk about myself, but I do talk about my gift. Um, is there anyone that has a question that they have for me? Uh, Y'all do know I can hear you, right? <laughs> All right, so. Um, okay. I see, I see it, hear it, live it, feel it, all of it. Um, that, you know, a lot of the spiritual people out there um, that they're real, the first thing uh, that I always tell people, if someone comes out and asks too many questions, I don't care if they're card readers, they're palm readers, they're tarot card, or whatever. If they're asking too many questions, there's a problem. That's a street reader. And, and not to be rude, I'm not out here pointing at anybody and everybody. I'm not, it's not my job. It's truthfully not my business. But um, in my profession, you know, if you're coming to me and they say, well, I had a medium tell me that my mom is with me, but she's mad at me. Be careful with that. Homie, don't play that. I don't do that. Because if I feel that there's a problem with anyone that has passed over that is through you, what I do is, is I bring them forth. I start living their life. That's what I said as far as reading energy. I read their energy. I feel their emotions. I feel their angers. I feel their forgetfulness. I feel that they're, if there's unfinished business, uh, say your, your granddad had passed over and you wanted your son to have a ring from him and he hasn't crossed over to the light. He hadn't gone to the light because it's unfinished business say that you've had an uncle that molested you or touched you and he passed over by a massive heart attack and he hasn't gone to the light. Well, this is what creates negativity energy. This is what we call the paranormal haunting. In my, my, I'm just letting you know, this is my, what I go through. The longer they're earthbound with unfinished business, shame, they become angry. And then you have the negativity in, you know, in their energy because they are energy, they're souls. And basically in their ear saying, well, you're no good. Nobody wants you. You're not worthy of anything. You might as well just go and rot somewhere. This is what's in their head. The dead. The living. And what I do is, is I pull them forward. No matter if they're mad, they're angry, they're kicking stuff over, they're slamming doors, they're making water turned on. What is the purpose of the paranormal activity? Not the physical, but the, the opening the cabinets and kicking out dishes and leaving the, uh, playing with the toilets. It's because they're trying to get recognition. They're looking for salvation. Through the correct and their good paranormal teams that are out there, they're the ones that are going there and look what's going on. I'm a healer. I'm a shaman healer. My first thing is, is I, I don't care if you're living or you're, you're dead. I'm going to want to help you. Bring it forth. Recognize it. Understand it. See it. Cut it and forgive it. Because you've got to remember, if, if that person has unfinished business, they're coming through you, and you're pissed off at your father, he's passed over, and you're, holding, you, you, you're not realizing you're keeping them earthbound because you're making them feel like, I should have never left you. I should have said I was sorry. So what we do is, through me I, and how I work, you know, that's why I call myself freak of nature, because I don't work like anyone. No, I don't, I don't want to be like everyone. I want to be me. I want to be the person that learn, teaches people, de living or dead, to let go, forgive. Because through you, no matter if it's an ancestor from thousands of years, that thousands of years ago uh, ancestor had died and didn't even realize, that, realize they died, and they have guilt. So they're earthbound. Earthbound means that they're, they're not touching the ground, but they're floating like about that much off the ground. That just means that they, they've died. They didn't realize they've died, but they're, we put ourselves in purgatory. It's a, called a dark spot. It's a dark room. We, even though you've got your loved ones around you wanting you to come to that light with them, they're not going, you're not going to see it. They're not going to see it until they... It, you, have you ever heard the saying, my life had just flashed through my... And, and I've seen that. That's exactly what they have to go through to recognize what they've done, realize it was wrong, because you've got some 
mean ass men and women over there that are still stuck in purgatory that they they're still holding on to that ego and that pride well once we're dead we don't have that brain we don't have that heart to have that ego and that pride so now they're in that energy field of that darkness and all they're seeing is their memories and it's not that God's doing it it's we do it ourselves we put ourselves in the purgatory until we start realizing we didn't need to control everything we don't need to get pissed off at everything because being pissed off means you want to direct something being upset what are you upset for because you felt un unloved we have to love ourselves to understand what love is I, I don't want to call myself religious because I, w I was a Sunday school teacher. I was Southern Baptist in Texas, and I was Baptist. That's what I was raised as. But through my entire life that I, you know, through my life that I was growing, I'm not giving you my age anyway, so anyway. <laughs> um, the, through the times that I was growing up, I remember being a young child, and, and I was in uh, Sunday school. I loved it. And I had this old lady walk up to me, a very, very old, frail lady, and she had a ball of jewelry, and it was a bunch of necklaces. And every necklace at the end had something on it. And she says, honey, can you undo this for me? Because somebody told me that you can do it. So that was teaching me patience. We have to learn patience. When I undid them, she looked at me and, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't like giving a lot of my personal life out. I don't have anything to hide. But, you know, being abused and uh, physical and verbally and also other things that happened to me. She looked at me and she goes, do you know in the Bible that God said that you shouldn't tell on your parents? You should, a child should not come between a mother and a child or the mother and the husband. Because when that child is an adult, that child should know right from wrong. Well, I went to look for this lady. I've got goosebumps all through my entire body because it took me until I realized I was special. I wasn't an outcast because I was the only redhead. I was something special because I had the understanding of empathy. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. And, I, I, and I'm not going to point out people, but I am going to say something to you, sir, in the blue shirt. You have a lot of pain, honey. And you have a lot of anger towards parent. And when we have that anger, she's still here. And you have to remember that when we hold on to that while we're alive, even though they're earthbound, that's called unfinished business even for you when you pass. You got to remember that some things that people do, nobody knows right from wrong. Nobody. And we have no right to hold that much anxiety and all that hate and all that anger, no matter what happened, towards a person because that means that they're your puppet, but you're also theirs. You're stuck in that time of still holding on to that sadness, that anger, that you forgot me, you gave me up. Does that make sense to you guys? So this is the exact same thing that I deal with with the souls that are still around. Is It's not what they've done, because I'm not perfect. I'm not a saint. I don't care how much gifts I've got. I'm no better than anyone out there. Nobody. But I do have the understanding for me to be able, when it was my time, it's my time to die, I can go without having any animosity or sorrow or hate or anything for anyone. So I become my own puppet. If I'm stuck in fear of failing, that's my own. If I want to do something that bad enough, instead of whining about it, but somebody stopped me from doing it, because I supported my entire family, you know what? It's time to put your thumb in your mouth, pick your big boy, girl's panties up, and start saying, you know what? I'm done excuse it, putting excuses for myself. It's time to do what I, make my dream come true. If you know right from wrong, and you know that that parent or that brother or that grandmother or that father, whomever it is, that was wrong, who's worse, them or you? And this is how I deal with the spirits. We cannot hold on to grudges. 
we're worse because the thing is we know right from wrong we didn't like it so why would you think why would you turn around becoming that same same way but worse sometimes so we have to learn to forgive because we abuse ourselves you know we're not human having a spiritual moment we're spiritual having a human moment we're souls our bodies die but our souls move on they we move on but we can't move on unless there is there's no unfinished business there's no anger there's no competitiveness there's no ego there's no hate you know what i mean i mean when i uh seen uh, charles manson i saw charles manson die before he even died i saw it they actually tried killing him many times in that jail but they ain't gonna do it they were afraid of him and when he died he's in purgatory right now he's in his own purgatory because even though he did not physically do what was uh claimed by the other people he was the puppet master and when we become a person that we hated that we feared we are the we're, we're no better than them so he's he's in his purgatory he's going to be in there for a long time because he has so much hate and it, it wasn't about anybody it was about his father his mother the woman that molested him you think i can't see your secrets i can see them all everybody's got a pandora box of secrets and, and no matter what life you're in i see them and it's not to judge you it's not to point you out it's to pull them forward recognize them understand them forgive them and let, and cut that cord from it so when i'm dealing with uh you know the with the GOS goes to Shepherdstown when i started doing it like i said it was right after my cousin patty had pa oh, was killed or died something just said you know what it's time for not to withhold your secrets but tell you help with the ones that hold the secrets and secrets become angers so i started doing them and then when i started talking to the people that were actually going through the things that we were you know some of it was reenacted because of they didn't want to be known and everybody has a right to have privacy everybody i don't care who you are everybody has a and you know when i started talking to these people I started seeing, you know, they were in pain. And it, it wasn't just the living that was going through the turmoil, it was the dead. They wanted to be heard. They wanted to be recognized. They wanted to understand why you were in their home. Even though it might not have been that home, you're on their land. Why do you have my mother's vase? You bought it at a flea, a, a flea, a flea market. It's displacement. We hold on to so many materialistic stuff, but you got to remember, we're we're born naked. We're going to die with clothes, but we're going to die with nothing. Material is not uh, everything. It's not. It's it's what who stands behind you, living or the dead. It's it's who respects you. Who who have you helped to be able to stand by your you when you die? It's love. You know, God says that and there is a god and there is a christ he has blue eyes not brown eyes just to let you know um i've had an nde more than one and i have seen him i do uh it's a weird thing and I, you know in the human life i should be hugging myself on the third floor of a hospital with the crap that i've gone through and seen and 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 what i lived through but i'm not worrying about what the human mind says i'm doing what i'm supposed to do i do what i'm supposed to be directed to do and my number one thing is i want to heal and i want to help and i want you to understand that you are loved all of you all of us we're loved we have to love ourselves we have these bad relationships and everybody you know you're pissed off at an ex-wife but yet your heart still for an ex-girlfriend what's that point yeah oh trust me you're going to as i know um you know we we don't own anything we own nothing people come into our life it could be from a past life to fix it to make it better but when you find yourself obsessing and possessing there's a problem because you are the person or whomever it is even if it's a female or the male or whatever your problem is is you're wanting to be belonged but if you're not loving yourself how and how do you know that that person's loving you seriously 
it took me a long time to realize that because when you're an abused child, you grow up and you think, well, you know what, that abuse and that alcohol and that putting yourself down and you're, and you're putting, oh, he, he's a good guy when he don't drink or she's a good person when she's not mad. You know what, that's an excuse. There's a healer in all of us. But there's a limit on self-love and self-worth to the point where if it's getting to the point where you're losing yourself, it's God saying there's a door opening, this one's closing, and it's time to go, walk away. You don't need to be nasty. You don't need to be rude. You don't need to be hateful or defiant because you're going to become everything that you hate it. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's, it's a constant it's, a, it's almost like a magnet. You're here and, and the magnet's following you. And it's, it, you're stuck in this circle, you know. And through our, our parents, when we're born, when we're born, we're able, some of us are able to see what's happening and cut that cord and break it up, change it up, be a better person. You know, and, I, and I've gone through that with my daughter. I had uh, two miscarriages. One was a twin daughter. I lost her and then I lost another daughter and, and I looked up and I said it's my lesson you know what you hate you know you don't like it don't become it because the more you hate it the more you're fearing of it the more you're manifesting it you're giving it an okay to do it because that's all you know so I did what I did I'm not perfect I didn't have instructions but she's a good woman she's a good mom she just adopted a baby and had three of her own, so I'm very proud of her. Took her a long time, trust me on that. She did the things that I would have never done because I was a, uh, what would you call it? I was very shut in, if that if makes sense. I was very shy. If you knew me 30 years ago, you're like, that's not you. You know, I never spoke up. I Always shy, embarrassed, and now it's like, is what is, love me or hate me. But with the, you know, I, I talk about this even on my timeline, if you follow me on Facebook, is because we have to have empathy for the dead. They, they can't change things anymore. We can change it for them. We can do it. And I think that's what makes a better person, is to be able to help that person pass on, that's passed on, be a better person, to be able to be, move on to the light. You know, and then you have the angry souls that I deal with all the time where they're saying, oh, you know what, my father says that I was a piece of shit and I'm, I'm no good and I, I'm not worthy of it. I said, well, the thing is, you have to stop. Don't listen to the words. Listen to the, feel the pain. Feel the pain that comes through that. Why would someone talk to their own child that's a piece of their soul it's because they're hurting and they were never taught that it was okay to be sad and it was okay to be in pain. It's not okay to be hurting another person because you're hurting. So I deal with this every day. I mean, I have some funny uh, spirits to come through. I've had, um, I don't watch TV. It's nothing but a bunch of drama, sad stuff. I do watch it at night to shut them off because they don't shut up. I sleep with the fan, with the motor, and, and I just wish them through it. Um, I was sitting on my couch, and I was watching the news. All of a sudden, Lucille Ball, big old long legs, beautiful red head, walks in my house. And I'm like, she sits and she crosses her long legs over, and her arms are all stretched out. And she looked at me, she goes, you watch this shit? And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> she goes, well, turn it off. So she's basically making me know that just because I'm watching it doesn't mean I have to watch it. You know what I mean? Um, misery loves company. And if you find yourself in that miserable feeling, get up and change it. Don't stand there and feed into that negativity energy of making it worse. Anybody have a question? Forgive me the way I say this. When I was growing up, I knew there was something special about me. I knew that I, I, was a, I felt like the outcast. I was always, you know set aside I watched my mom and I knew there was something special about her she's been seeing spirits when she was young really really young my dad died in 06 and we're sitting at my table in, uh, in the dining room kitchen type of an area and my mom's sitting here and I'm sitting here and I'm like oh my god my father
father, my grandfather, my mo my mother's mother. Everybody started popping through, and I'm like, didn't say nothing. I, I, knowledge to me, I pay attention. I don't talk it. I just paid it. I, I said, Ma. I said, you got people behind you. She didn't look. She didn't budge. She didn't say nothing. She knew. She saw it because I've got eyes behind me too. I can see what's going on with behind me. And she goes, Oh, well, who is it? I said, well, you've got grandpappy, you've got grandmother, you've got grandma, you've got Katie, my niece that died at three years, six months. You've got daddy, you've got her, and another man. And, and I'm telling her, and she goes, well, what's the tall man look like? And I said, he's an Italian man, and he's a very tall man, very elegant man, wearing a suit, three-piece suit. He goes, oh, that's my Uncle Frank. I said, Mom, you're gifted. She goes, yeah. So what? And it, it broke my heart because I'm dealing with this since I was two. Two years old. Feeling like I was a freak or a weirdo or, or something. I was evil because I wasn't raised that it was right. And you're sitting there telling me, I'm in my 40s. You're in your, she's 20 years older than, not 22 years older than I am. You're telling me uh, you're gifted and, and so what? She says, Lord, she looked at me and her, her eyes just pierced right through me. I seen them since I was little. They don't shut up. They don't leave me alone. They don't stop coming through my closets. They don't stop making me smell their flowers or their stinking toilet perfumes. I said, Ma, do you not realize I'm gifted? She goes, I know. It popped in my head. I did, I'm not an ego-driven person. I didn't throw nothing back in her face. It popped in my head, that's what you were trying to beat out of me. It wasn't me. It was that. Something that she was fearing that was never taught or asked a question on, that it was okay. I don't care what your religion is, but when, you know, we're all created in the same image. All of us have different jobs to do. All of us. Every single one of us have something to do. We just have to find the love, the light, and all that within us. And, and your question is, when my mom sat there and denied her own gift, the first thing it said was, Lori, take it as a lesson. It's not that you have to drive yourself, oh my God, I'm different, what's wrong with me, where am I going, am I psychic, am I medium, am I intuitive, why do I hear the animals speak, why do I still see the dead? Just educate yourself. It's the more you're, you're putting in and, and learning, testing. I, she's one of my good students, not just my manager. She's hard-headed. There's a lot of hard-headed. I was hard-headed because we're in denial. It's called self-work. We're, we're, we're so low about ourselves. How can God choose me to be a freak of nature? I can almost say freak of nature because there's nothing I can't do. Why did he choose me? And then I was, I was told because all of us are his children. We have jobs to do. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to start going on the Facebook. I'm going to peep myself through their little group doors, and I'm going to watch them. And then something said, you need to start asking questions. How are you going to learn if you don't learn off another one? So I started asking questions. And then, boom, within months, I was reading. I read their dead dog. I smelled a cancer, and a woman, through, her dead nephew came through. He was a military, Iraq. He got blown up. I saw all of it. I feel it. I live it to tell the story. Through her, through the woman, that his, his aunt that came to me to ask about him, I went through her energy and read her sister, his mother. I said, honey, can I ask you a question? Does your sister have cancer? No, I don't think so. I said, I, it was given to me. I'm going to release it. That means I'm going to tell you what was being shown to me. On her, my right, her left side, and right where the, uh, the rib cage starts, she has cancer. I can smell it. She goes, okay, Lori. I said, it'll be up to you to do it. But I have to release it. Because if we're not releasing pencil-wise or, or expressing how we feel in a manner, because all of us are raised with manners, in a manner of uh, explaining to other people, you're hurting my feelings. But don't sit there and argue it. Walk away. Because the less you're saying, the more they hear you. And I told her, I said, I'm going to explain it. I'm gonna, I just told you what I've seen, what I smell, and it's up to you to do it. 
she came back six months later and she crying her eyes out Lori you saved my sister's life we found the cancer we just got her in just in time to me it's a blessing it's a blessing I'm trusted with that information even though I feel your pain I feel your 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 breathing issues I feel all of it but I don't take it personal don't take things personal it's given to you for to release it you release it if you feel like oh I can't tell that person write it on a paper write it on a paper and then that way when you're oh, you're writing it on a paper you're actually releasing it and learning from it to trust in yourself because a lot of all of a lot of us don't trust ourselves I don't care who you are there's something that you're not trusting within yourself I go through it all the time. Does it make me a, a bad person? No. I'm human. I'm human. I make a comment. I'm, I'm or a funny ha ha ha. Am I human? Why do I have all these gifts? You know, so it's a, it's a joke. You can laugh. <laughs> but the mediumship, you know there's something about you that is special. Start, start testing yourself. You have a, a friend or a husband or a child that you can sit and test yourself with. Do it. Start testing yourself. Love who you are. There are people out there that are taking these spirituality gifts and putting them in the negative. That's none of our business. Walk away. It's none of our business. Because that's their soul they have to fight, not us. If they come to me, I know there's a reason why they were, they were sent to me. Because I need to help them take that pain within them and let them see the light that we see. And that's what I do. Living or the dead. Makes sense? Awesome. Anybody else got questions? That is the science, and, and, and forgive me for saying this, but science is ignorance. It's ignorant, it's limited. Show me one person in the scientific that I actually, the, the party I did last night was eight people. Woman was a, uh, what was, uh, it was a, uh, she was a heart surgeon, one of the highest ones out there. I freaked her out. I said, now, how, how, do, how does your, in your term, scientific, scientific ways explain me? She goes, I don't know, but we need you. I told her there was a bone missing in her wrist. I told her that there was a, a curvature in her spine. She was freaked out. And every one of them actually were all nurses. I freaked myself out too. So confirmation is good. You know, it's not that I'm asking for the pat on my back, but, you know, you're doing a damn good job. Or, hey, you're right, you're spot on, you know. And there's a lot of people that are intimidated with people like myself or a lot of the paranormal teams that are out there. You know, they're doing it because they love what they're doing. You've got other ones out there for the fame, attention. Uh, they're, they're stirring up a lot of crap. Okay, it, 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 you have to explain that to me on what you're trying to look for. Because if you're saying uh, the gifts that I have, did it come from my bloodline? Of course it did. But it doesn't have to be in your bloodline, honey. You have to see yourself as part of, we're all as one. All of us. All of us. There's something special about all of us. Is it, um, and it is in the bloodline more, more alert because they're more educated because they talk about it. But everybody's gifted. Everybody. Everybody's gifted. There's something special. The child, the, the person right there with the uh, Chuck Taylors, sensitive of empath, hides in the bedroom on the corner of the bed, did doodling. Everybody's gifted. A lot of shut, people come in, become shut-ins um, that don't want to be around people or they can't stand the noises. I don't like noises, truthfully. I don't. I can put up with it and I can uh, control myself. But a lot of people have issues to where it's nonsense. Stop holding on to it. If it was meant to be, it was meant to be. You have to talk louder, honey. Believe it or not, and, and like I said, I am a freak of nature. I don't shut it off, honey. I can't. But I do know to the point, it's just like if you're walking behind me and you're talking to your, your child or your mom or your dad or whomever, and you're talking about, oh, we just robbed a bank. 
I've gotten to the point, it's none of my business. I don't care. I know how to walk by. Living or the dead. You get it? So I work a lot, totally different than a lot of people. I had a medium that I was actually, when my, a year after my dad had passed, my mom started, started starving herself, well, going into a depression. And it wasn't the point that my dad died. It was the point now her guilt was eating her up. She could have been a better mother. She could have been a better wife. You know, guilt. Even though you're alive, you still have guilt. And she started starving herself. And I, I went into a, in front of a medium because, I, truthfully, I used to look at palm readers and psychic mediums. Fake, fake, fake. <laughs> you know, I can look at a person. You're a good person. You're a bad person. But I put her in front of the, t the computer. It was live show. And he was okay. He, he was okay. I'm not going to put anybody down. He was okay. He brought in enough for her to know uh, that my dad was around her. And I started becoming friends with him. I would follow him. He made my mom happy and content, and she started eating again. And, and to me, that that's nice. I like that because he wasn't selfish and bringing in, uh, you know, things that oh, your your husband wants you to uh, sell the house and and go do this and go. He didn't do that. He told her exactly what she needed to hear, even though it wasn't exact. It was still okay. It brought her back, if that makes sense. So I started following him, and then my, my gifts, it was weird. I sat in front of the, the computer, and what that little two-year-old child that I remember, crawling around, and this old man, uh, 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 he wouldn't let me get hurt. He wouldn't let me crawl on the rocks. He wouldn't let me go in the road. It didn't matter. I was getting ready to fall down the step, but he would push me back up. It took my dad 30 years to show me a picture of his father. It was my granddad. that was 100% Cherokee Indian. And he's still behind me. If you're spiritual, that's my granddad. Um, so, uh, you know, it, a, a lot of the things to shut it down, there is no such thing. No such thing. No such thing. I've got all y'all talking to me right now. It's crazy. Every one of you are talking to me. It's curiosity, but I'm afraid to ask because I don't want to piss her off or I don't want to say the wrong thing. Don't worry about it. If it's coming to you, it was meant. Because something within you needs to know. So, let's see some hands. Asking questions. How much do you rely on either like an ancestral memory or a dream? Dreams are usually, um, like a loved one comes in, they, they, because we're so, it's like being um, under the, you know, the, the, the gas we go and we're relaxed when we go to sleep we're, we're physically here but mentally we're asleep so they're easily to come in and out and see you depends on because I'm a, a dream interpreter as well I told you I was freaked um, your dreams are not exactly what you're dreaming they're not exactly it's actually that's how we're uh, we're trying to control that dream but they're still trying to get it in there to tell you we're worried that you have a water leak in the bathroom and the tub is getting ready to fall through the ceiling so I mean you're, you're dreaming that you're out of water and, and you, you just fell through you see the, the same similarity so it's we're stubborn we're human we're stubborn we don't want to hear there's a monster in my closet well who's that monster the old man that used to beat me but he's still got a monster face so we pertain things in our own way so the body is a director and the brain is is basically allowing the energy to let allow to give us that information talk louder all the time but it's funny because y'all call them auras i see the person even in a picture i'll blow it up and i'll show you yeah, I see auras. I, I see auras. I see uh, orbs. I see um, the aura is actually, it starts at the belly button. The aura, believe it or not, it starts at the belly button and it and expands out. So when I'm reading them, because I am a shaman healer, I see the pain, the madness, the sadness, the holding on to something that you wish you could have changed, but you didn't. So I'm seeing all that. So it's, it's, the, it's the color. It's the rainbow within you. But it starts at the belly. Just like, you know, when we have ailments, our soul is trying to tell us, get up and do it. Forgive somebody. 
So instead of us, you know, the human brain is in defiant, what do we do? We ignore it. So what happens? We got a headache, we, our uh, chest pain's hurting, I've got a back issue going on, pan-sciatic nerve, my feet hurts. Everything on our bodies have reasons. And it's your soul, it's your soul trying to help you. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you, baby. Can you repeat that, please? I've got uh, an ear issue. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, baby. Hold on, honey. <coughs> Are you looking for something that belonged to a pop up? Is that what you're talking about? Um, the reason why I think like this question might sound kind of stupid. Nothing is stupid. Nothing. There was this story I read about the about a boat and a doll that and there was a little girl attached to it who used less reflexes to have a dairy. Does that sound that unrealistic to you? Well, you've gotta remember that in the in the past time. Seventeen sorry. You've gotta remember in the seventeen, eighteen hundreds we actually, they have different ways of living. Your question is perfect, by the way. It's very educated. Um, a lot of people are so attached to, like, dolls and vases. Uh, it depends on what it is. They do get attached to that, but it doesn't mean that they are the doll. Do you understand that? But a lot of spiritual people, they can sense that person with them. Like, um... You can't hear me? I need you. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. All right. The question that you had was very educating. And um, a lot of us have something that belonged to our parents or uh, our grandmother had given us this tiny little doll and they've held on to it to the point of saying her grandma had passed over this doll is mine it's my only way to be able to hold on to my grandma when they die they're attached to that doll doesn't mean that their soul is in the doll it just means their energy is around the doll and they still protect it as if say um the person that owned that doll had was found dead in their bed they didn't know they died it was a, it was normal death doll starts get, sitting up that's because that soul doesn't know that it's gone. So it, it tries to get the attention of still being alive. Does it make it a bad thing? No. No. Annabelle's not a bad thing either. She's just mad and angry because she was moved from her home. But is it the doll or is it the, per the person that's attached to that doll? Make sense? Yes. Any more questions? Not really. <laughs> I hear the dead better than the human or the living. Hold on, I'm gonna come down with you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna come down. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed Lori Johnson's panel called My Spiritual Journey. Again, uh, normally I would apologize for clipping about six minutes worth of content out that you would not have heard and it would have sounded like dead air. But I am not apologizing for that and my little tirade in regards to microphone usage. It just irks the living heck out of me. And that's just me. But uh, if all of you do uh, complain about it or uh, anything like that, I might post it up at a later date to show you exactly what have ha has happened. Um, we are working on the other panels that we did get at uh, Eastern Panhandle Paracon, and please, uh, it's it's just a pet peeve. It just irks the hell of me in regards to mic usage. And if you got it, please use it. There is a PA system for a reason. So there's that. Um, see you next week. We uh, At the time, as this is being provided for all of you, uh, we will be, at the end of that week, we will be, I should say, August the 10th, we will be at Alakon for 
to cover it in every sense of the word. Hopefully, we'll, we got approved for our the two interviews that we have, uh, and we'll be doing a coverage after the fact. So we'll be coming away with probably uh, who knows. So uh, to be continued. See you next week with possibly Otacon coverage. So take care. Enjoy. See you next time on the Long Coat Mafia.